Paola from beautiful Costa Rica. I'm so sorry I can't be with you all tonight in Jerusalem to accept my award, but I'm there in spirit and I'm very happy to address you instead from a place that also shares the spirit of the award. I'm talking to you from the campus of the University for Peace in Ciudad Colón, Costa Rica. I know it sounds like a dream, but there is a University for Peace. It's a UN mandated university here in Costa Rica that brings together students from more than 50 countries from across the world to learn about peace in all its aspects. And I'm here to teach a course on women and new media in the Arab world. I think the spirit of the Elyaf Sartawi Awards and the spirit especially of the man I wrote about in the column that won me this award is truly here on the campus of this university. When Dr. Isam Sartawi and Lova Elyaf decided to break the barrier and to start talking and cross that wall between Palestinians and Israelis, they emphasized how important and how dangerous the concept of peace is. And as you all know, Dr. Isam Sartawi was assassinated for calling for peace. And the man that I interviewed for my column, Dr. Ezzeddin Abu Laish, is another of those unique individuals who continue to call for peace despite all the difficulties that he's faced. It was a great honor for me to meet Dr. Ezzeddin Abu Laish. And I met him during a very difficult time for Palestinians and Israelis generally. I met him just a few days after Israel and Hamas signed their ceasefire after the, the war in Gaza earlier this year. And I was not supposed to go to Israel. As many of you know, it's very difficult for Egyptians to go to Israel despite the peace treaty between our two countries. And I almost lost a friendship between myself and a very, very dear friend who told me it was the wrong time to go to Israel because it would be rewarding those who support peace. But I told him that it's especially during those difficult times when we're not supposed to talk that we must talk. And that's why it was such an honor to meet Dr. Ezzeddin Abu Laish. And the fact that Gadi Kenny, an Israeli peace activist, took me to meet Dr. Ezzeddin emphasized even more how important it is to cross all those barriers. And for Dr. Ezzeddin to talk to me right after his, one of his surviving daughters came out of surgery and to tell me when I asked him, do you hate, that hate is a disease, again emphasizes how dangerous that concept of peace is. As you all know, Dr. Ezzeddin Abu Laish lost three of his daughters and a niece when an Israeli shell hit their home in Gaza. And despite all of this, he continues to call for peace and continues to call for talks among Israelis and Palestinians. And that is the spirit of the Elyaf Sartawi Award. And that is why I'm so honored to have this award and to accept it. So I thank Search for Common Ground and I thank the Jerusalem Report, which published my column in English and Qatar's Arabic language Al Arab newspaper for publishing my column in Arabic. And I thank Ita Prince, the editor in chief of the Jerusalem Report, for being there tonight with you to accept the award on my, on my behalf. I also want to thank Avi Hoffman, the, editor, the managing editor of the Jerusalem Report, who every month chases me down because I'm always late with my columns. I also want to thank my family because without their support, I would not be able to, to crisscross all these lines and, and talk about peace in, in, in this way because it was my family that raised me to bring up these difficult issues and have supported me during these difficult times. Um, very soon after I received this award, I got a lot of criticism in the Egyptian media because I was accused of wanting to normalize with Israel, even though this award is not from the Israeli government but from Search for Common Ground. I also want to thank my boyfriend Dirk, without whose support in New York I would not be able to do all these crisscrossings and traveling. And most of all, I want to thank the spirit of the University for Peace here and Search for Common Ground. They've worked together in the past and they continue to work together. And without organizations like these, we would not be able to continue this dangerous work looking for peace. It's very easy not to talk and it's very easy to support violence, but it's very difficult to talk and to, and to insist that peace is the option. And so I send you salam and shalom and peace from this campus of this very unique university. And I want to remind you that the reason that UPeace is here in Costa Rica is because in 1948, Costa Rica became the only country in the world to abolish its armed forces. And we all know what 1948 means in the Arab world. So keep that in mind and keep that idea of peace in mind and continue to talk and continue to insist on breaking down all those walls that want to prevent us from talking. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.